Of course, much of Reason's console is dedicated to effects. If we look along the channel strip here, and you can scroll through the channel strip using this handy blue bar here, and you can see a miniature representation of the console, each channel strip has got a huge amount dedicated to sends, inserts, and routing at the top. But you can see that we've also got quite a lot of processing power as well. Here we've got a dynamic section, and below that we've got an EQ with two dedicated filters. This means that in many cases, you're not going to have to apply compressors and EQs in the rack. You can just go straight to these, and these are actually modeled on SSL hardware, so the quality of them is pretty astounding. Now you can see I've already added a little bit of EQ on some of the channels, but let's uh, have a look at a real world example. So let's solo the Kong and we'll play it back. Now I'll show you the EQ section working. We've actually got a high frequency, we've got a high mid frequency, low mid frequency and a low frequency. We've also got two dedicated filters up here. These filters are really useful for ripping out low end or high end really quickly. So you can see we can just uh, engage the high pass and, and see the frequency that we're working on. And obviously right down at the bottom, we're going to let everything pass through. But in many cases, if you want to re uh, re reduce the low end, we can take it up to about 270 hertz. And it can be a really useful frequency for allowing low end to pass through from other parts in our mix. But these are really powerful and also very musical so they don't sound too extreme. The low pass filter works in a very similar manner, or we'll just reduce high end. So if something's a bit too trashy or has a bit too much hype, you can re reduce the high end using this filter. I'm gonna leave both of these off for now. And let's say we wanna add a little bit, bit of high end sparkle. Well, let's set a frequency. So let's say everything above eight hertz, for example, and we'll activate the EQ and we'll start to enhance the high end. Again, really musical. And this is a high shell filter, so everything above this frequency that we select will be enhanced. So unlike digital EQs, we can add quite a lot of the frequency before we get a hype sound. And again, we've got high mid with a Q setting. So this is fully parametric and we can sweep the frequency again, but we can set how intense the Q point is. And that's the notch or the amount of frequency that we're working across. So if we have a low Q point, we're gonna be adding a subtle amount across a wide range of the frequency, frequency spectrum. And we can make it more narrow if we wanna say find a frequency to remove. So we can say minus 13, sweep through the frequency range, make it wider, and just reduce a couple of dB. So that's a really good way of finding a problem frequency. If you've say got a bongo or a snare in there that you want to remove, that's a nice little technique for doing that. We've also got a low mid, which works in a very similar way to the high mid, but it's obviously lower in frequency. And then finally, we've got a low end, uh, low frequency section. So if you want to add some demon low end to your, to your beats, you can do it by using this section. Um, I find around 100 hertz is a nice frequency to be adding below. Again, this is a shelving filter, very much like the high end. So everything below that frequency will be added or removed. So these are bell, bell filters really in the center here and shelving for low and high. And again, very musical. So pretty subtle and not extreme like digital filters. Um, above this, we've got a dynamic section. And the dynamic sections also very simple um, and very easy to use, but very effective. So we've got a compressor. And if you wanted to reduce the peaks in a sound, so let's say you've got a very busy drum loop and you've got uh, some bit parts that you feel are jumping out or some parts that are too quiet, and um, we can use the compressor to really reduce the difference between these loud and loud and quiet parts. Um, you know, some people think that compression is just something to add and it's going to enhance the sound, but really we're reducing the dynamic range. So we're reducing the difference between loud and quiet parts of the loop. So the ratio will affect how much uh, of gain reduction occurs when the compressor kicks in and the threshold decides when it kicks in. So you can see that 
if I bring the threshold up, we're not getting any compression. When I bring it down, you're going to start getting some compression. I'm going to have to bring the ratio up. And we really want the peak mode on. This is going to catch the peaks as opposed to the average uh, differences between the loud and the quiet parts. And then we've got a release control, which you really want to time with your track. So in this case, I'm going to have quite a long release. And now we've got the loop nice and compressed. In this case, I don't really want any compression, um, but some gating is often useful. Now the noise gate um, will actually cut noise out of signals if you've got noise in between drum hits, but you can use it in, uh, with drum programming for very different effects. I'm going to go full range at the minute to show you um, the gate in action, and that's the gate fully shut. So as we reduce the threshold, it's going to start picking out the peaks. So they're the peaks of our signal creeping through the noise gate. And then we can time the release. You can hear how that tidies it up some. So there's a lot of room sound and the compression that I've got going um, in the rack is actually creating a longer sustain between each uh, hit. And this gate can cut all that out and tidy it up because we're just catching the peaks and we've got 40 dB of reduction in between those peaks. You can have obviously less than that. And then I'm time the release to four, just in between. If you want a little bit of hold, and that will hold the gate open while the peaks uh, slide through, it can just be a really nice way of tidying up your drum sounds and making individual hits tighter as well. So there you go, there's a quick overview of the EQUIC EQ section and the dynamic section in the console. These can be go-to processors for you. So before you go to the rack and start um, loading M-class uh, processors, which we're going to do later, um, this can often be a one-stop solution for you. Next up, I'm actually going to move away from the console for a moment and show you how to use individual outputs from your instruments 